Hi there, I'm Linda and this is Hutton's Valley Permaculture. It's autumn here in South Gippsland, Australia, which means it's time to do some work in my perennial garden bed and give some love to the asparagus and artichoke plants. The perennial garden bed lines the edge of my front yard vegetable patch and it's one of the first gardens I put in up in this top section. I've got beautiful globe artichoke plants as well as asparagus with mature plants that I'm harvesting from, as well as younger plants that I've actually grown from seed, which are a few years off being able to harvest. Strawberry plants have been abundant in spring, but certainly are finishing off now. And this row of comfrey that I lined the, the garden with has been fantastic as a source of mulch. In today's video, we're going to look at each plant and see what we need to do to support it so it's really productive come spring. Now with the case of asparagus plants, once they sort of start to yellow off like this, then there's no more energy being put down into the crown. And what you do is just trim off each of these uh, stalks at the base. And then I'm going to be getting in here and clearing around, mulching and composting. I might have to be careful, we're getting another flush of strawberries so I don't want to impact those. But I should be, around, be able to get through there, just clear out a little bit and get my mulch in around the crown. This plant here is one of my younger plants that I have grown from seed. So it's certainly a fair way off uh, being able to be harvested. So I'll just trim all of those right down at ground level and get in. I'll clear that strawberry plant out. I might share that one with a friend. Now the crown isn't above the ground. Sometimes I've found my plants sort of come and poke out of the ground, but I'm going to just pile up some compost over the top of that and then we'll mulch on top of the compost. Often I'll just uh, mulch with some of these uh, strawberry plants as well, especially the decayed leaves, they're great. But I'll just also add this back on top as part of the mulch layer. Okay, so that's that little one done. Now here's our first artichoke plant that we're gonna take a look at. Now, if you have a look here, you can see that there's the old stalk from last season that I haven't cut off. Uh, you do see that people recommend cutting them off as soon as it's finished flowering, but I leave it just as a marker of the plant so I don't lose where all these plants are. And then you'll see that sort of early autumn, the plants start to regrow from a, a different point. So it's now that I'll come around and take this old stalk off and then also give it some compost and some mulch just to make sure that it's really productive for spring. So sometimes these can just snap off, but I don't want to disturb this new plant that's growing. So if it doesn't go easily, I'll get out my uh, loppers because some of these are quite thick. I suppose another thing you could do, because you do risk damaging the new plant that's coming up by lopping this at a later time. You could mark where your plants are if you kind of were afraid you're going to lose them all. That's as much as I'm going to do because I don't want to damage this little pup that's growing here by cutting any further. But I will be hanging on to all of this and chopping that up and using it as part of the mulch layer. And once again, I'm just going to be checking in around the base, get rid of any little strawberry plants that are growing nearby and then giving it some compost. Then I'm just going to roughly chop these up and then using all of this as a mulch. This is the dried head of one of the globe artichokes that I didn't harvest to eat. Sometimes it's just lovely to see these in full bloom with that beautiful purple. But at the moment they're kind of dried off and I'm just going to break that up and add it as part of the mulch layer as well. I'm hoping as years go by, I'll have to add less compost to these areas as the soil builds just from these natural materials that have been grown in place. Now on this side of that artichoke, you'll see that there's some comfrey, which I'm just gonna chop and use as mulch. The cold of winter will soon knock that back. So I'm making the most of it while it's still there. 
to give some fertility to my artichoke. We should have one happy artichoke plant there now. In the asparagus world, you'll find that there are male and female plants. The females flower and produce a red berry, which is um, what produces the seed. And they don't produce as many of the stalks. So if you can buy crowns that are male, or if you grow from seed, you don't know what you get. So just plant lots of plants so that you do get some that are quite productive. So I'm just gonna trim all of these off right at ground level. Not too many plants really close to it. Just pull out the few that are and I'll get some compost onto that. When I made these garden beds a couple of years ago, all I did was the no dig style with layering of the cardboard. I didn't put any compost down. I just put lots of wood chip and then I just planted lots of strawberries into that. Um, after about a year, that's when I put in the asparagus and the, the artichokes. And I've just been keeping an eye out for any grasses and pulling them as they appear. But they really haven't been too much of an issue. And I'll just get rid of the grass. And here's some of the, the red berries you can see on this plant. And I suppose they're asparagus seeds. Maybe I'll keep those and see if I can grow some more asparagus. Or maybe I'll just put them in the garden and see if they grow themselves. I've had some really beautiful asparagus spears from this, my oldest plant. So I'm looking forward to it being really productive next spring. and I'll get some compost onto it. And right next to this plant, the strawberries uh, have really kind of died off and need a bit of thinning out. So it's perfect to use that as some of the mulch for the asparagus. And I can't help but gather up these little berries and I'm just gonna put them into an area at the end of the garden so I remember where it is. And I might even mark it. Put them here and see if we get some new asparagus plants. And I'll just mark that spot with a few stones from the driveway. So it's kind of obvious that something's going on there. And just a handful of compost for good measure. Now this plant here is a perfect example of why I come around and check all of my plants. Upon clearing all the, the vegetation away from it, you can see that the crown is actually pushing out of the ground. And I want to make sure that um, it's all under some sort of cover. And I'm going to pile up the compost quite thickly on this so that this is, you know, a couple of inches, a few centimetres underneath the surface. So I've put that compost quite thickly there. And I'm going to mulch over the top, which is really just basically to protect compost layer from drying out. And I'll be harvesting this nearby comfrey to be a perfect uh, mulch layer for this plant. The mulch also helps prevent moisture loss. It holds on to moisture when it's uh, rained upon. And it also promotes soil growth. Moving along the garden bed in this section here I can't see any asparagus. I did plant quite a few young seedlings in this area but I could have lost some. So what I'm going to do is still harvest this comfrey to increase fertility of the garden bed. It will also help with the strawberries which I'll come through later and make sure I've thinned the strawberries out so that they continue to be productive as well. 
Moving along the garden bed, we've come to the first of our artichokes that doesn't look too promising. And I've got another one over here. I would have expected some growth from these plants by now. They should be looking more like this guy next door. Now what I will be doing with these two plants is leaving these stalks in place, which acts as a reminder to me to keep checking on them. If they don't regrow, what I can do is split uh, one of my other artichoke plants and replant um, these two artichokes. If you have a look at this plant here, you can see that was the original plant in the middle and then it's grown these two plants from that. So what you can do is dig up a whole plant like this and divide it, replace one of the plants in this spot and then I could use one of these to fill in my artichoke gaps. And here's another example of a plant that I could dig up and split if I wanted to um, spread the plants around. Just taking a closer look at this plant, you can see not only has it got this large one, but it's got this little one over here and another fairly small one here, which might be good to transplant because they're smaller they might transplant more easily I'm not too sure I've only transplanted artichokes once but that's just my thinking now harvesting comfrey at this point is ideal because there's not uh, the flowers that the bees love and also the seeds that can spread these plants around in areas you might not want them so without uh, the seed heads on them, you can put these leaves anywhere. If you have left it too long, um, I would only put it somewhere where you do want comfrey or I'll often just throw it in the compost because it really activates the compost really well and makes it get hot quite quickly. Now I have been doing a bit of clearing of this rock wall garden now that we've hit cooler months and the snakes are all gone and some of the grasses have taken over up the top a little bit here as well whereas the other end uh, I seem to be able to control the grass as well with my no dig um, gardens. Up this end it's not been as easy. What I'm going to do today is, because it's hard to clear that grass from this asparagus plant, you can see the, the crown is just there heading towards the rock wall. So I'm going to dig this whole thing up and try and separate out the, the grass from the asparagus plant and just replant it. Bit of a shame to have to have moved this plant because its roots were really becoming established there but I think I've just put it in the, the wrong place to start with being really close to that brick wall and it was just unfortunate all this grass took over so I'm going to attempt to dig that out and get this plant back in. All right, this might have to be a project uh, for later on this afternoon. I'm going to finish this garden bed and then I might just soak this whole root and then try and pry out the grasses. But I don't want to damage this plant while I'm doing it. So I think soaking and removing all the soil will help expose all the roots and I can pull that out a lot easier. You can see here, this is like the growing point where the new spears are starting to form at the end of the plant and I certainly wouldn't want to damage that. Okay, I'll let that soak a bit and then get to work on it.
Well, we've given our asparagus and artichoke a bit of love and made the most of this comfrey before the cold weather comes and uh, decimates it. I think these little plants will be happy going into spring and it hasn't taken that long. It's really worthwhile giving these little plants a bit of love and helping build the soil because they're going to be giving food for really not much effort for years to come. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Thanks so much for watching and bye for now. Been slowly working away at getting these roots free of the grasses. And I think we're making progress, but it's so meshed in together, it's pretty difficult. But I'm hoping to preserve, you know, this is the growing end of the plant. Hoping to preserve that and keep enough roots on it so once we get it back into the ground, it can settle back in and kick in again in spring. I think this is as good as I can get it. I mean, you could keep picking away at this grass forever. And you can see just down in there, I can't get those without kind of pulling the whole crown apart. All these little fine hair-like roots are the grass roots, which are kind of right through everywhere. But I've got out quite a pile and I think it's given this ch plant a much better chance um, without that huge clump of grass on it. So I'll get this back into the ground and I'll just have to keep monitoring it and keep uh, cutting the grass back. Now that's where it was and I've just moved it in a bit and there's certainly no grass being an issue here. I've made a little mound just under it and kind of fanned out the, the roots and I'm looking for that in to be just at the soil surface. Got it buried and we're just going to spread this compost out and get some comfrey mulch around it. I'm going to leave this stalk on it just as an indication where this plant is and I'll be keeping an eye on it and hopefully suppressing any grasses and uh, hopefully now we've given it its best chance.